Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to our Outlier Suspense video series here. I am your host, John Robb, and I am joined here by debut author Maxie. Dara, Maxie, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. Thank you so much for having me here. Fantastic. You know, your debut book caught my attention because the title is tremendous. A Grim Reaper's Guide to Catching a Killer. And now this is book one in your Scythe Mystery series, so we know that there's going to be more, which is very exciting news, and I'm sure you're very excited to have, you know, to have that out. So why don't you tell everybody a little bit about what you got going on here in this first book? Absolutely. Um, so book one focuses on uh, Kathy Valance, who is 42, um, and she lives a pretty standard life except for her job, which is as a corporate Grim Reaper. So basically in this world, um, Grim Raping has been uh, corporatized, and now instead of it being someone in a black cloak with a scythe, it's a company called Scythe. Um, and it has these agents who are basically modern Grim Reapers and they go out and they collect the souls, they come back, they do paperwork, very standard, um, except on one occasion, the soul that Kathy is supposed to collect isn't there. And when she finally tracks him down, he uh, is this angsty teenage boy and he claims that somebody at Scythe murdered him. And that's not supposed to happen. That's very much against company policy. So um, she can't go to one of her colleagues, obviously. So she teams up with Connor, the angsty teenager uh, who is deceased, um, to solve his murder. And uh, simultaneously, she is in the middle of a divorce and pregnant with her ex's baby and dealing with a lot of mess in her personal life. And she has to incorporate him back into her life to solve this mystery. So it's it's a lot on her shoulders, but um, hopefully it's a fun ride. It's almost like you don't like Kathy. You put so much stuff on her. <laughs> <laughs> But, I just, I have a lot of faith in her. <laughs> so Scythe stands for Secure Collection, Yielding, and Transportation of Human Essences. And now this is kind of a world you created within the world. So it's like, it's kind of like a subgenre world of the world we're living in now. You know, give us a little idea of the conception of the idea to do that, because, you know, it's one of those things that's kind of difficult when you're creating these subgenre worlds within the world we live in. Mm -hmm. So for me, um, death is something that I have uh, had a lot of exposure to because my mom is actually a death doula, um, which is a concept that is not always the most familiar to people, but basically it's like a, a midwife for people who are dying. Um, so they're there to support them emotionally and, and make sure they're comfortable. Um, so it's been a very present topic in my life. Um, and as a result, it's held a lot of mystery and a lot of fear. And I think I really wanted to normalize it for myself. And the best way I could do that was by putting it in a cubicle. Um, <laughs> so that's kind of how this developed. It's very much a magical realism situation um, where, you know, these are everyday people dealing with extraordinary circumstances. Um, and it's, it's the juxtaposition of the, the concrete and the mundane with the extraordinary and the unexplainable that I think for me at least makes the topic more approachable. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, I kind of look back and, and Piers Anthony comes to mind whenever I think of out of the world Grim Reapers, you know, on a pale horse was what, what was kind of, you know, your inspiration author wise to kind of get into this genre and to kind of want to start writing these kinds of books? Well, I've always loved mysteries. Um, I grew up reading murder mysteries, which I realize is a little dark, but hey. Uh, I get the Christie yet. rules. Kill them all. A hundred percent. So I knew that was a genre that I felt at home in, um, but I kind of wanted to try something a little different with it. And I always thought it was, uh, it would be fun to play with the representation of death having to solve a murder. So I kind of went about it with that concept and then the characters and everything else kind of evolved from the general idea of it. Um, but that was kind of the impetus of the story was just having death have to solve death. Um, yeah, so that's kind of how that all came about. And why is Kathy the perfect person to kind of be the lead now in your book? I mean, she's going to be the one that's going to go through the series. What was it about her when you were creating her that made you just fall in love and say, yeah, she's the one. That That's how I'm going to do it. I think... Uh, 
she was perfect to me because she's so incredibly imperfect. Mm -hmm. And I feel like in fiction a lot, um, we see characters who are very idealized, who are sort of fantasy, fantasy versions of ourselves. And I think it makes sense. Of course, we want that as a form of escapism. But I feel like sometimes it's it's really nice to see ourselves reflected back in the heroes of stories and in, you know, there's a little bit of a romance with her ex-husband and, you know, to see that just everyday people can can be romantic heroes and and to solve mysteries and do all these extraordinary things while living an otherwise ordinary life. I think for me, at least, that's something that I strive for in my daily life to have those extraordinary facets of, of life. And I think it's it's fun to see you know somebody who is just somebody you'd see at the grocery store doing these incredible things yeah and kind of looking at them and saying i wonder what their life's like you know yeah. people do that you know you kind of sit at state fairs or casinos and you see people walk by and you're like hmm i wonder what their life's like <laughs> <laughs> exactly yeah people watching is definitely a bad habit of mine so i completely relate to that no so, so did, did you start out, uh, are you a plotter or are you write organically? I'm very much in the middle. Okay. I tend to come to a story with the beginning and the middle, or sorry, the beginning and the end of the book in my brain, and then sort of very loose plot points that I want to scatter throughout. And then I just kind of dive in and let it evolve organically, or at least as much as possible. And did you know that this, that this was going to be a series or when you kind of were shopping the book and getting an agent, was this just going to be a one-off? How did that kind of work itself out? So I actually wrote this to be a one-off. Um, okay. I felt very much by the end of it, like Kathy's journey was complete. And uh, honestly, with with book the my second book, which is currently um, in revisions, uh, it's a different protagonist. So we're exploring different agents in Scythe. Oh, um, okay. Yeah, which I, I'm having so much fun with because in a company, there's all kinds of people doing all kinds yeah. of jobs. So it's it's so much fun to be able to see what the, what their lives are like. Um, but yes, this was definitely always intended to be a one-off. And then when I got the book deal, which was a two-book deal, I was like, well, what else can I explore? And I realized I had an entire company of people to explore. And then you just decided, all right, we're going to go for it. So you now is... Is the company going to be set in one location? Are you going to move it? Are things going around? How are, How is that going to kind of work dynamically? So the second book is also at Scythe, but it's a different branch of Scythe in a different part of the country. Um, my plan as it stands right now, and these things are very much in flux, but I would love to explore a few different branches and then have a sort of a culminating uh, situation where we get to revisit old characters and see them work together in a, a very um, new dynamic for them. So that's my hope as of right now. Now, being a debut author, of course, you had a long time to write this first book and think of it. And then all of a sudden you sell a two book deal and you're like, I don't have a second book. And they're like, yeah, but guess what? Your deadline's May 1st or whatever the deadline date is. And you're like, oh my gosh, now I got to write under a deadline. So how was that kind of for you? Because, you know, that's that's something you know, I talk about it. You know, you, you hear the music and things. It's like took the band forever to write their first album, but now they got to write their second one right away. And sometimes, you know, you know, that leads to, you know, like pressure. How do you handle that? How'd you handle that? Um, honestly, I'm very lucky in the sense that my whole career trajectory has kind of led me to this. So I was a journalist for a while and um, that taught me how to work under tight deadlines. Mm -hmm. um, and I also, I've been writing for such a long time that I, I'm able to to turn out things pretty quickly. And, and I'm, I also um, am a person with anxiety. So having a deadline, <laughs> breathing down my neck was actually great because it was like, all right, well, this is all I'm going to focus on so that I don't have a panic attack. Oh, poor thing. That's too bad. <laughs> <laughs> so October is a great month to kind of bring this out. Now, are you a big Halloween fan? Like, do you love the Halloween uh, holiday? I love Halloween. I'm very into spooky season. I uh, consider myself a recovering goth. Um, I, <laughs> I was a teenage goth and there's a big part of me that I still love, you know, cemeteries and I still love um, bats and black cats and all of the things associated with, you know, the, the spooky season. And I, I feel like there's just, there's so many different ways to enjoy the season. I, as much as I say all those things, I'm also a coward. 
so for me, <laughs> the tone of of Grim Reaper's Guide and, and and books and media like it, where it's lighthearted, but there's still those elements of spook, that for me is the ideal way to celebrate this month. Yeah, you know, I think that there should be more of an advent calendar for Halloween time, start October 1st, because my daughters and I, it's always like when October 1st hits, it's like, all right, which scary movie, let's get the schedule going. And it always culminates with, of course, the greatest movie ever made, which is Halloween 78. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's like, you know, our Halloween movie that we're going to watch. I now don't live in the same city as them, but we're going to see them next week. And we're going to get together for our Halloween spook movie next uh, next week when we're going to go see each other. But do you kind of have that kind of schedule? I mean, I know people kind of do like Christmas movies. It's a Wonderful Life. And I'm like, hey, let's get some fun <laughs> stuff in there. <laughs> I, um, I'm creating new traditions kind of as I go, I find. Um, this year was the first year I've ever seen Hoc Hocus Pocus, which is wild because it's such a classic. Oh, okay. Um, and it was a, a movie night with my friends and now I'm going to return the favor by introducing them all to um, the Addams Family, the 90s version. Oh. Uh, so that's kind of how I love to celebrate is just having friends over, lighting some candles, eating a bunch of junk food and watching cheesy 90s a little movie. halloween light not really going into yeah. halloween's or the friday the 13th or the terrifying you know those types of ones yeah yeah i have very specific people i can watch those with but i would say my friend group and i we, we tend to be uh we tend to be nightmare prone <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk a little bit about your journey you know a lot of authors or a lot of people out there are aspiring authors and they always you know, there's so much information, which is kind of why we do Outliers Writing University to help people understand the journey, because not every journey is the same, but talk a little bit about your journey of, you know, you wrote the book and then you're going on agent wise publisher. How did all this come about to now we see the book and because it's out now as when this video is being done. So the book is out, it was out October 1st. So talk a little bit about the journey. Well, first of all, I think it's so great that you do this because I feel like this industry has so much mystique around it and and it's so hard to know sort of where to start where the entry point is. So I think it's yeah. great that this kind of gives that those answers. Um, so my journey was a little unconventional, so hopefully it's still helpful. Um, I did start the traditional way. Uh, you know, I wrote my manuscript. I went through beta readers. I cleaned it up as many times as possible. And then I started shopping it to agents and... I had, you know, some requests for the full manuscript, but it never led anywhere. And then on a whim, I submitted to um, Berkeley's first open call, the imprint of Pen Penguin Random House. And I was like, it's Penguin Random House. That's a long shot. Sent it out there and then promptly forgot about it because I was submitting to a bunch of other, you know, agents and doing a million other things. Fast forward a year and I got an email from... Uh, Tracy Bernstein, who is an executive editor at Berkeley. And I almost deleted it because I thought it was spam. <laughs> <laughs> and it took me a few reads to realize that no, this was the real deal. And it was a request for a full and I sent it. And then it was another email requesting a Zoom meeting, which I, I don't think I've ever been as nervous for anything in my life um as i was for that meeting that really and, helped your anxiety didn't it i'm sorry that really helped your anxiety didn't it yeah oh a hundred percent i yeah. mean oh that just calms you right down <laughs> <laughs> nothing quite stops the nervous shakes like having right. to talk to an executive editor from your dream publishing house yeah. um and the conversation went really well and she was interested and and from there it just kind of snowballed into the book that's now on the shelves which is still so surreal for me but I, I they they've now had a second round of open submissions and I hope more publishers follow suit because I feel like agents understandably tend to be more risk averse whereas publishers have the ability to take those risks more just because they know exactly what they want yeah. um so I hope more people get the opportunity to follow in that path and did you get an agent now Yes. So I kind of backtracked and went to an agent that I had really wanted and said, deal's already on the table. If you want me, I'm happy to sign with you. And she said yes. Um, and so I signed with her and now she's she's dropping me for at least these two books. And I couldn't be happier how how it all sort of shook out. It's 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 been such a dream. Now, 
I know Halloween is, is pretty much, you know, like an American style holiday. Not, I think there's some across the world that, you know, might do some Halloween things. I'm not quite sure. But has your book sold in any other countries right, at this particular point? It has. It's been it's been so cool to see the reach. I actually had a lovely reviewer from Greece who wrote a review in Greek and I translated it on Google because I was like, I need to see what this says. And it was just, it was so cool to, to see the reach of, of that, like all the way to, to Europe. Um, and I, I know there've been some people in the UK who picked it up and it's really lovely to see the, the way that it's been received not just here but abroad that's it's mm -hmm. bonkers <laughs> and do you have did you get any like mentorship from any authors that were like don't read your reviews just write your book <laughs> don't get into the reviews you know uh, there's an author friend of mine that always goes and reads the reviews of his book and he finds the worst one and he takes that name and that name dies in the next book it's like his way <laughs> of thinking himself so i didn't know if you kind of had any conversations with anybody or agents or authors kind of about that i actually didn't and part of me wishes i had because i definitely <laughs> <laughs> i've definitely been uh reading reviews more just out of interest and in, and to see what i feel like everybody has such a different perspective and when they read a book they pick up something very different than any other reader and it's always interesting to see what their perspective is on on the book um and yes occasionally there definitely are some reviews that i wish i hadn't read um but then for me i'm trying to frame it as more of just a, a an educational tool of okay this is maybe something i can improve on in the future because i think as artists we're always learning and growing and and adapting and uh, sort of sponges for other people's perspectives so that we can then reflect the world back out so that's what I'm telling myself anyway, is we'll see how long that lasts. We'll see how many reviews I can get through before I uh, just need to, to leave Goodreads alone for a while. <laughs> and now, and now that the book is out, um, and again, the book came out on October 1st, Grim Reaper's Guide to Catching a Killer. Uh, how was, you know, kind of, I'm kind of at the tail end probably of your publicity. How has it been for your first kind of publicity tour, talking with people, getting interviews and doing those kinds of things? It's been wonderful. It's been so lovely to to chat with people who are passionate about books mm -hmm. and about, you know, the literary world in general um, and just the the support that I've been lucky enough to receive from so many different facets of my life and the media and strangers who are taking the time to read this book so that they can give their opinion on it. It's it's been so moving and very heartening. Um, I, I have a background in acting, so uh, I, I've done, you know, a lot of stuff in front of the camera and interviews and that kind of thing, but to do it on a subject that is so, such a, an intimate part of my soul is, is really, really cool. It's, it's such a, I know I keep saying it's such a surreal experience. I feel very, very lucky. Yeah, I think a lot, you know, and you're funny you mean acting because it's easier to probably act like someone else than it is to kind of act like yourself with your own work. And that's probably a little bit, that really helps your anxiety, um, <laughs> you know. So, but I mean, I think it's wonderful that you're, you're kind of out and, you know, and you're kind of getting out there because I always say, you know, writing the book is easy, but getting someone to buy it, that's eh, the difficult part. Um, and, you know, just getting yourself out there, have you had, you know, what kind of experiences uh, at book signings? Have you done anything like that? Have you, be, you know, been involved in any conferences you're going to go to? How's that world going to be for you? Yeah, I actually I had my first book signing on Tuesday, which was nice. such a cool experience. Um, a lot of lovely people came out uh, that, I, that I, some that I knew, some that I didn't. The, the people at the store were so lovely. It, it's just, it's such a cool communal experience. Mm -hmm. And um, I have my first uh, sort of conference panel reading tomorrow in Toronto, which I'm really excited about. Mm. Um, I, I feel like this is a, a, a time of new experiences and I, I'm so excited to get to try all these things that I always sort of fantasized about and never thought I'd get the chance to do. So it's it's been amazing so far. Well, it's really important to, you know, network with other authors and get with other authors because, you know, that's how you're going to get blurbs and kind of back and forth and kind of get more into the world. So um, do you have any schedule for 2025? Do you think you might be hitting some other conferences that you know of or are you just going to pound away? 
I hope I get to do more conferences. Um, right now, I my schedule kind of tails off at the end of next week, um, and hopefully it'll pick back up. But that's kind of where we're at right now. We're just kind of taking it one thing at a time. Um, I think with the book launch still being so fresh, we're kind of focused more on like the launch side of things, and then we'll go into more of the the readings and that sort of thing as we go. Um, but there's definitely a lot I'd love to do, and and I hope to keep getting the opportunity to do these these amazing events and, and experiences. Mm -hmm. Now, the link to your website will be in the interview it's posted, but I'm going to let everybody know that it's maxidara.wixsite.com slash maxidarawrites. And that's probably the best portal for people to kind of find out all the new information and everything that you got going on, right? Absolutely. I'm also very active on Instagram. Um, I definitely post a lot of book stuff there. I also post a lot of questionable memes there in terms of um, questionable humor. Not always funny, a lot of dad jokes. Um, but if you're into hey, dad jokes- Nothing wrong with a dad joke. <laughs> hey, no, I'm a big proponent of a dad joke. So if you're into dad jokes and cute animals and occasional book updates, yes. that is a, also a very good place to find me. Fantastic. Well, I want to say congratulations so much on the book and great on the journey. I mean, that's a great story to just, you know, non-agent, just kind of get into the contest and boom, there you are. And then you're kind of looking at the agent like, here I am. And, you know, and they're like, yes, you are. Let's go. Um, so that, that's kind of, I mean, that's kind of cool. And again, everybody, the book, Grim Reaper's Guide to Catching a Killer out now. Make sure you grab a copy, book one in the site series. So can't wait to see. And I'm sure Book two is probably going to come out next October. That's you're probably going to be on that cycle. So congratulations. And thank you so much for spending a little bit of time with us to talk about it. Thank you. And thank you so much for chatting. This was lovely. All right. You have a good one. You too. All right. Bye-bye.